Hello everybody. My name is Krishnan Nanda Balan and I'm a scientist and drug discoverer by profession. I'm here to discuss with you today the status of innovation, how it impacts our future and especially the status of innovation in healthcare, how is how it is impacting healthcare. What is innovation anyway? Merriam Webster defines innovation as something new or something new added or change to something that already exists. Do you have to be an inventor to be an innovator? No. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, but we all carry around the smartphone, which is Steve Jobs' innovation. So innovation can be incremental, but yet have a disproportionate impact on our lives. So what is the status of innovation today? Uh, and what is the future of innovation today, especially when you think of it in terms of healthcare? I would argue that it has never been brighter. And the reason is that there is democratic access to two of the key ingredients needed for innovation, information and technology. The third, even more important ingredient is human ingenuity and creativity. In the bygone era, you had to be a king or an emperor to actually send off messengers uh, or crews to actually uh, attain in, in the quest for knowledge and riches. But today, you can access information uh, through the internet and also access technology uh, very e economically and very easily, like cloud computing, for example. Okay, so how, how does AI come into it? How, how does artificial intelligence come into it? You can think of artificial intelligence as a catalyst for innovation, as a transforming agent, as a multiplier effect. And before we go further into how it impacts innovation, let me get some definitions out of the way. Artificial intelligence broadly can be defined as teaching computers to do what human beings do uh, routinely or repeatedly. And you want to teach computers to do this efficiently, accurately, and economically. A great example in healthcare is the use of artificial intelligence in diagnosis using uh, inputs such as radiology or mammograms to detect tumors, for example. The terms such as machine learning and deep learning are also used interchangeably with AI. Machine learning is that field of study where you actually teach computers to learn without specifically programming them to do so. And deep learning is a subset of machine learning where you're actually teaching the machines to learn the way human brains do using artificial neural networks. Why is this important? Because you are getting access to data at such a fast rate that computers need to be able to handle this data on their own. And combining all of this with statistical principles and data analytics leads to the application of data science that is now crucial for advancing innovation in any field. Right, so what do, you, what, what do you expect from technologies like artificial intelligence? Uh, what, what is the impact that is desired? Well, you want innovations at a faster rate and cheaper than before. A great example of this is cost of computing. The cost of computing goes down every year compared to the previous year and the capacity of the chips increases every year compared to the previous years, right? So that's what you want. <coughs> so in healthcare, I'm going to actually come to two very specific examples, wherein I will argue for the case that artificial intelligence and allied technologies like DNA sequencing have indeed resulted in innovations that have changed our life. Here's the first example. In 2019, December, the world came to know of SARS-CoV-2 virus. This was a new coronavirus that was much more deadlier than the influenza virus and uh, almost 10 times as fatal as that. Within a month, scientists had already sequenced the entire viral genome and had studied the biological nature of the infection. So even though we did not know exactly all the aspects of the disease, 
COVID-19. We knew how the virus infected us by January of 2020. At that time, I remember very clearly that the conventional wisdom was it would take at least two years to develop a vaccine and therapeutic agents to control the virus. So this was a quandary facing humanity that with such a deadly virus, are we going to see the same level of fatality that existed, uh, for example, in the Spanish flu? What people didn't realize was that we already had technologies ready to tackle this, namely synthetic mRNA. So you can synthesize any piece of DNA or messenger RNA you want and express any protein you want. And by doing so, scientists across the globe were able to actually simulate viral infection without having the virus infect. And were quickly able to come up with a vaccine strategy that by the summer of 2020 was already in human trials. And by December of 2020, three vaccines had already been approved. So what did they tell you? You should not be a slave to conventional wisdom. What was known before was because of the circumstances of our past knowledge, but human ingenuity combined with technology and information, in this case, our experience in using technology like synthetic RNA and uh, the DNA sequence available of the viral genome, and also the raging pandemic itself was a ironically uh, an accelerator here because you had access to so many people getting infected that you didn't have to wait too long to assess the efficacy of the vaccine. So that was a very good example of innovation using existing technology and information to solve a problem. The second example is a little more personal to me as a drug discoverer. If you look at the rate of innovation in the discovery of new drugs and the development of new drugs, it is antithetical to innovation in, say, computing or even an allied field like DNA sequencing. The very first uh, draft of the human genome uh, released in year 2000 cost a few hundred million dollars and took several years. But after that, the rate at which we have developed sequencing technology has advanced so fast that it's actually faster than even computing capability. And today, if you want, you can get your entire genome sequence in a few days for a couple of thousand dollars, if you so desire. Okay? So, why is drug discovery so inefficient? Why is it not progressing as uh, other fields? Well, it's actually a very complex process. You start with a hypothesis, you want to say solve a particular disease, diabetes or cancer or anything else. And depending on the hypothesis, you start screening tens of thousands of potential candidate drugs. In the lab, you test your hypothesis, a few of them will succeed. Then you have to prove them in the relevant animal models. Then you're left with literally a handful of drugs that first has to be tested in healthy volunteers, human volunteers, of course, to show the safety. And then you've got to go to a slightly larger patient population to prove the efficacy of that drug. And finally, into a much larger trial so that you know that when the drug is introduced into the larger population, it is going to behave exactly the way you're predicting it because, you know, do no harm. That's the first rule. And which is why it takes any, anywhere between 8 to 10 years and 800 million to a billion dollars to develop the drug, right? So when we actually, uh, we, I'm referring to uh, the organization I work for, uh, we actually faced this problem in 2015. We were helping other companies and agencies uh, trying to identify the best drugs that could work. And we started off with the hypothesis that why cannot we use existing human clinical trial data as well as the millions of publications that are accessible to us now through the internet, through PubMed and so on and match the known safe drugs the way they work. They may not have succeeded in clinical trials but you know how they work in the body 
and then match them to the desired biological effect you're seeking in a disease. This could not have been done without the advent of AI. It, it, to do this manually, even if you had an army of 10,000 scientists, it's mind numbing and you can't actually think about doing this. So we, we started this and in a matter of just 12 weeks, we arrived at a hypothesis wherein we could reposition an existing drug. This drug was used as a pre-anesthetic sedative uh, to calm patients down before they went under the knife in the operation theater. And we said we can actually use this based on what is known about the drug to calm patients down who are agitated, who have neuropsychiatric conditions. Not only that, this, this drug which was already approved was given as an intravenous infusion or an injection. Uh, we actually created a sublingual uh, formulation so you can actually put it uh, underneath your tongue and thereby patient compliance is easier. The care go caregivers who are taking care of the patients, their job is made easier so you're having a real impact on the patients. So in four years and in a total budget of just over $100 million, we were able to get uh, to the stage where we could apply for FDA approval. So what did that tell you? Again, if we had thought of developing a drug by designing it from the scratch and not used all of the data available to us, we would never have reached this far. Not only that, since when we started, we started with a budget of uh, just over a couple of hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> nowhere in the millions. And we were able to generate enough data to uh, attract investor funds as well as take the company public. So what does that tell you here? Uh, I want to leave you with three, three messages. First is be bold with your imagination, but also be bold to test your imagination. It's not enough just to think outside the box, but you've got to get outside the box and actually do the stuff that you need to do. Second, think of technologies like AI as multipliers, right? Uh, they, are, they are there to be used by you in a manner that probably no one had ever thought of before. But finally, the real key ingredient is human ingenuity and creativity. That is what drives innovation. And as long as we encourage human ingenuity and creativity, the future of innovation is very bright. Thank you.